Welcome, sir. Thanks for coming back and seeing us. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. I wanted to ask you first, I, you've probably talked about this an awful lot, especially over the past couple of years, but I wanted to ask you about uh, your, uh, your work with uh, David Bowie. Uh, you worked with him back, it was the late 90s, right? Yes. Uh, tell us how that all came to be. Well, we were on Arista Records at the time. And, and we was rustic over time? Yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah sure. And uh, we had um, been looking for the right producer that, that both the band liked and the label liked, and the one we all agreed upon was Tony Visconti. Mm -hmm. And he had produced um, lots of, uh, most of Bowie's catalog um, at that point. And um, uh, T-Rex. So we really liked his sound and his whole, his whole vibe. And we started working with him, and um, just one day, Tony called uh, Bowie up and just said, hey, you should come check these guys out, because he lived, we were recording in New York, and he lived around the corner. Hmm. And he just came by one day. <laughs> it was just like, in. It was no big deal. Oh, I'll have a bite to eat, and I'll swing by. Or I remember, <laughs> yeah, I remember distinctly being in the, in the lobby, um, you know, uh, chatting up uh, the people at, at reception and just having lunch, eating a sandwich, and this, uh, Little fella walks by, you know, with like kind of a, you know shag hair and glasses and uh, sunglasses on and a, and a flannel, you know. But when he went by, it said it just, you know, indistinguishable. You know, yeah. Hello. I was just like, <laughs> we minute. all looked at each other like. <laughs> and, you know, wow. So yeah. So that was the moment then when you first realized that he was in the in the house, so to speak. Yeah, literally he walked by me, and I, you know, you. We were excited that it might happen, but he ended up uh, hanging out and um, we played him some of the tracks we were working on. We were doing basic tracking at that point, but it was pretty far along and uh, he just was smiling and making jokes and just being uh, just a genuinely uh, great presence and, and, and put everyone at ease sure. uh, just by being so cool. So when he, when he passed, uh, I, I think this was after you were on our show last, mm. um, just impressed me to no end. You pulled together a, uh, a tribute show two weeks after he passed in Portland. Is that yeah. Right? yeah, I was actually in New York when he passed, and it was really kind of serendipitous because I had uh, uh, Visconti had been in Portland on tour, and I hadn't seen him in like 16 years. We'd been in touch, you know, online and talked on the phone, but we hadn't been together for a long time. So I had that great connection with him, and there, but there was like something I couldn't put my finger on it, and I, maybe I attributed it to you know, being 16 years older or just, I don't know. But there's something about his mood that was, did strike me as odd. And that later that weekend, I was down in New York and woke up in the morning to read the news that he had passed away. And it was strange for me because when I go to New York, I, I think of that, obviously. It's right. just like, what a peak. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, what a great New York memory. And to be there when he passed after, it just seems like sometimes not to go full Zodiac on everyone, but it just, <laughs> it just sometimes, you know, yeah. sometimes the stars, like, align and things just happen. And then, so, on the way home, uh, uh, I start, I, my phone was just blowing up with, you know, you should do a show, you should do a show. And I was thinking about it in terms of the way we, we have a, a, a thing we do every year in Portland called Spencer and the Walrus. It's a yep. the Beatles, um, a, you know, Beatles night, and we do the full horns and strings and you know, it's, it's really involved. And so I was only thinking about it in those terms mm -hmm. of like, how, how could I possibly put this together in this short period of time? And I was with uh, the general manager of State Theater and Port City Music Hall. And we've just put it, we put a, a date on hold at Port City and uh, also wanted State Theater as a safety, just as an afterthought. Mm -hmm. And um, I then, instead of taking on the whole thing myself, I reached out to my community and Plenty of people wanted to play, and they all did a great job. Yeah, and it was a it was a really cathartic and, and beautiful night. We ended up selling um, selling Port City out like in like a day or two, and wow. then we ended up you know over the course of we I think we had like ten days. We uh, fifteen hundred people wow. bought tickets, and we donated all the money to the American Cancer Association. Wow, that's incredible. Very cool. Um,